There's no way my daughter could have got into any type of fentanyl. I agree with you. I agree. I think someone, just like a bartender, mixes up a drink, put it in that sippy cup. That's the only possible way it could have got in there. Is there any more questions, officer, detective? Do you agree with me? I'm not agreeing because I, um, who would do that to a child? That's I. I there's a re no really, really, really messed up person. Thing. Really messed up person would do that. There's no possible way. Well, got in there somehow. It was a crisp morning on April 5th, 2018, when emergency responders rushed to a small home after receiving a frantic call from a mother named Jana Pratt. Her voice was filled with fear and desperation as she pleaded for help for her little girl, Charlotte Napper Talley, only 18 months old. When paramedics arrived, they found the toddler unresponsive. Her small body was cold to the touch, and she wasn't breathing. They fought to bring her back, but time was not on their side. Despite their efforts, Charlotte was pronounced dead an hour later, leaving the room shrouded in silence and heartache. As the investigation unfolded, a tragic truth began to emerge. The autopsy revealed a grim discovery. Charlotte had ingested fentanyl, a powerful synthetic opioid. Two separate blood tests confirmed an overdose, a dose far too high for anyone, let alone a tiny child. Detectives combed through the house, searching for answers. They found two sippy cups in the toddler's play area. One of them, stained with traces of liquid, tested positive for fentanyl. The seemingly harmless cup had become the vessel of a fatal poison, leaving a shattered family to grapple with the unthinkable loss of their baby girl. You guys took a nap? We barely, couch. we barely fell asleep. By the time I was actually, you know, like dozing mm -hmm. off, Miss Vernon was knocking at the door. Okay, and at that time you put her in her bedroom? Or left her on the couch? At this time, I had picked her up because she was laying with me on the couch. I'm not sure if she was on top of me or beside me at that point. Yeah. Um, I picked her up and I laid her on the couch okay. and I opened the door and I came to get her off the couch and I put her in her bed. Okay. Listening to Jana Pratt recount the events of that tragic day, you'd never guess she was a mother who had just lost her daughter in such a horrific way. Her voice was steady almost detached, without a single tremble. There were no tears, no signs of grief washing over her. She didn't even appear to be in shock, which might have explained the unsettling absence of emotion. Um, did you, did she eat or drink anything? My boyfriend told me he made fish sticks mm -hmm. and I want to say like french fries or something okay no, that was earlier in the day when you guys got back did she mm -hmm. eat or drink anything no she didn't eat or drink anything okay. she had left her he said she she didn't want her sippy cup before they walked out the door to come and get me so he left the sippy cup there which when sippy got, cup was that to my knowledge it should have been the pink one the pink sippy cup mm -hmm. and where was that located um, here, it sounds as though she's laying the groundwork to shift the blame onto her boyfriend. At the very least, her words ensure he will be questioned, if only to determine whether he might have been an accomplice. Did he have that or did she have it? It was left. It was left there? She didn't want it on the way out the door. Okay, when you say on the way out the door, you mean? When they left to come to and get come, me from okay. school. Okay, when you came back, did she, that pink sippy cup, do you remember where it was? I didn't even see the sippy cup. Did you give her the sippy, sippy cup at all? I didn't see the sippy cup. Okay. Do you remember it being in her, in her bedroom, that sippy cup? I think I might have found the sippy cup on the way to, I, don't, I 
I'm not sure. I just remember, I believe, putting the sippy cup in her bed with her. Okay. Did you put anything in the sippy cup? No, there was a red liquid in it, and I know we had huggies. Yeah, I remember seeing some huggies in there. To my, to be more specific, happy drink huggies. Is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you, when you were living, let me, I'm just going to show you the, the picture. This is, um, is this the same sippy cup you're thinking of? Mm -hmm. Now, did you have put liquid in there? Um, earlier in the day? Yes. You did? Mm hmm Okay. Was that the same sippy cup that you put the liquid in? Was it before you went to school, when you got home from school, or? I put a, a different juice drink in there, and she had a complete fit, and she didn't drink it. Okay. So how the red liquid got in, he changed her sippy cup when he fed her. He said she drank a little bit and threw it. Okay. Out of that sippy cup? Mm hmm Okay. Um, when you lived at that address, um, did you get anything delivered in the mail from overseas? I had just ordered her entire room from Walmart. I don't know if that came from overseas or not. Well, Walmart won it. I'm saying, like, did you order anything that maybe that, you know, might not have, that might have been out of the ordinary, any type of... The detective questions her about any recent purchases that could have been imported from abroad, aiming to trace the origin of the fentanyl. Given that fentanyl was relatively easy to acquire from China at the time of the crime, this inquiry is vital to the investigation. Anything from a different country? No, my mother purchased the baby gate that was in her room. Okay. I believe she purchased that from Walmart also. Okay. There would be no reason like you would get any packages, say, from China or from Japan or anything like that? Like directly from them? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. But to your knowledge, you I ordered everything from Walmart. Okay. okay. Um, so just to be clear, the, the, the stuff that was in that sippy cup, you did put in or you did not? I did not. Okay. Okay. Do you have any idea um, – well, let me, I'm just going to cut. I'm just going to be blunt to you. Your child died from fentanyl poisoning. So why did CYF tell me hypoxic cardiac arrest? They were, there weren't lab results then. So I'm going to explain this to you, okay? In that sippy cup was fentanyl. In her blood was fentanyl. When they, we just got these results back. It's the same type of fentanyl that people are overdosing every day in Pittsburgh and dying from. Same exact type. Okay. So I need to know how the fentanyl got in the sippy cup. Because right now it's not an accident. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so scientifically, it's impossible for your daughter to put fentanyl in a sippy cup, okay? Physically, it's impossible for her to do. Scientifically, that's another story, but right now, that's, what, that's how she died. Once more, she displays no real emotion over the tragic loss of her daughter. The detective, observing her closely, is certain this couldn't have been an accident. While it's conceivable that a child might accidentally ingest something harmful if drugs were carelessly left out by someone in the family, the idea of fentanyl being deliberately placed in a sippy cup is something else entirely. It's not a lapse in judgment. It's a cold, deliberate act. It wasn't 
wasn't a heart attack. It wasn't any other reason other than she overdosed on fentanyl, which is the same fentanyl that people in the streets are dying on every single day. How the fentanyl get in the sippy cup, Janine? Just straight fentanyl? Yeah. So what is it, like a liquid? A, a, a I'm not a scientist. It comes in a liquid form. It comes in a powder form. I, I'm not exactly sure. But what I am sure of is that that fentanyl was put in a sippy cup, and there was liquid mixed into it, and it was given to Charlotte, and that's how she died. So I need to know how that got in there. I have no knowledge to how fentanyl got in my daughter's sippy cup. Pratt stood there, her arms tightly crossed over her chest, a posture that screamed defensiveness, as though she were trying to shield herself from something, or someone. It was the kind of stance that made it hard to believe she was telling the whole truth. In fact, there were only two people who could have been behind the poisoning of her daughter. That left only three possibilities. One, her boyfriend had done it, and she was covering for him hiding the dark secret that linked him to the crime. Two, she herself had taken her daughter's life and was now trying to turn the blame on the boyfriend, painting him as the culprit. Three, they were in it together, partners in crime, bound by a shared guilt that only the two of them truly understood. No matter how you looked at it, it was impossible to believe that Pratt didn't know something, or at the very least, suspect what had really gone down. Because you realize right now this investigation is taking a whole different turn. Yeah, clearly. And the when someone gives someone something and they die from it, it's a homicide. She was poisoned intentionally. Okay, well, okay. I've been making complaints to my rent office because I've been smelling a funny smell in my house of uh, several times returning back to my house. This is since you've moved or? No, this is living in apartment number five. This is where you used to live? Yes. Saying. Okay. Well, that still wouldn't explain how it got in the sippy cup. Well, I'm just as clueless as you are. So are you implicating that I put fentanyl in my child's sippy cup? No, I, I, but based on this timeline, I mean, there's only two people that could have put fentanyl in the sippy cup. Based on what you just told me about 10 minutes ago. And based on the whole timeline of that day. I need to know how it got in there. Because this, this investigation is not going away. Okay, and I'm telling you, I returned to my house from being picked up from school, mm -hmm. and I did nothing out of the usual. Okay. We took our stuff off, and she ran around and played, and I'm waiting for my social worker to come. Okay. Do you get fentanyl delivered from China? I have, I know, I don't know anything about fentanyl. Okay. Did you ever put anything in her sippy cup other than no. huggy juice? She's drank water. She's drank milk. She's drank Kool-Aid liquids. But have you ever put anything in there? No, I have not. Okay. Other than... I mean, because some parents will give their kids a little bit of, you know, Benadryl or something like that. So like, no, that doesn't go in a sippy cup because it's supposed to be measured out and Benadryl is not supposed to be drank. Tylenol is not supposed to be drank over a specific amount of hours. It's supposed to be one dose and that's it. Right, I agree with you. I agree with you, but people, parents... I'm not one of those people okay. or parents. Okay, that's what I'm asking. She's growing more and more upset, but the fire in her eyes isn't burning with grief for her daughter's loss. Instead, it's the accusation that seems to fuel her anger, as if the very suggestion that she might be involved in her child's death is an affront she can't bear. Of course, a truly innocent person would fight against such a claim, but any parent, deep down, would be frantic, trying to understand what happened wondering if anyone else could have had access to that sippy cup. Yet, Pratt's mind seems solely fixated on defending herself, as though the truth behind her daughter's tragic death doesn't concern her nearly as much as clearing her own name. And it 
it, it wouldn't be the first time, okay? I'm just asking. But the problem, we have a problem right now. Would you, is that safe to say that there's a problem? I mean, I have, I have, I have to figure out how this got in there, because your baby is can't tell me. Is there a reason someone would want to do that? With some, is there a reason why fentanyl would be in a sippy cup? No, there's not, and no, there's not a reason anybody would want to. The amount of fentanyl that was in her system was extremely high. Okay, it was it, it was very high, and that's essentially when she drank the sippy cup. Whenever she picked that sippy cup off the bed, it was absorbed very quickly, and once she swallowed it, she didn't have much time to survive. That's not possible because I didn't physically see her with her sippy cup, and we were at home. I was with her. I can't tell you the exact time frame, but when I got home, because mm -hmm. I went to the welfare office a little bit after I, as soon as I left school, there's no possible way. Pratt firmly rejects the detective's theory, insisting there's no way things could have unfolded the way he suggests, yet she provides no other plausible explanation to fill the void. Without any evidence to back up an alternative story, her denials seem empty as if she's grasping at straws. The detective, visibly strained and doing his best to hold it together, is clearly struggling to stay composed. It's no surprise, handling a case involving a child's death can shake even the most seasoned officers to their core. Well, that sippy cup I showed you, that picture of, that's the sippy cup that had it in it. I'm going to step out for a little bit and let you think about this. There's nothing to think about. Okay, well, I need to step out anyway. All right. But I, that's why I brought you here was to tell you exactly what happened and what we found. And, I mean, it wasn't really me, but it was, you know, scientists and, you know, people at the lab that discovered all this, medical examiners, doctors. Okay, so am I under arrest? No. Are there any more questions? I just want to know how it got in there. That's, that's the big question. I don't know how it got in there. This is news to me like it's news to you. If you had to guess how it got in there, Manufacturing issue with the happy drinks. So you think it could have been the, the huggy? Yes, and as a matter of fact, I took a sip of those huggies and I actually, it didn't really have a, a pleasing taste to it. We tested the huggies. Mm. No fat now. So what are you implying? Pratt has gravely underestimated the investigators. What she doesn't know is that they've already tested the drink because in a case like this no one overlooks the obvious they've gone through the contents with a fine-toothed comb searching for traces of poison it's standard procedure yes but it's also a chilling reminder of just how far this case could go the moment they found something it was more than just a means to uncover the truth it became a race against time if the poison was deliberate there was no telling how many other victims could be out there. A recall might be necessary. Suddenly, the entire world could be at risk. And Pratt? She has no idea that the truth is already slipping through her fingers faster than she can deny it. I'm, 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 I'm asking. I'm just asking straight up how it got in there. And I'm telling you straight up. I have no clue how it got in there. No clue. Is this something your boyfriend would have done? 
He has kids of his own. Why would he hurt my child? Um, well, there's, I mean, there's, did anyone else have access to the apartment? Maintenance people, the people who run the place. So other than the maintenance people and people that run the place, the only person that has access to it is you and um, Mr. Williams. Yes. Was any maintenance people in there recently? I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? Does anyone, was anyone in your house that uses heroin? I wouldn't know what people's personal drugs they use. But to your knowledge? No. Did you have any people in your house that use heroin? No. Do you use heroin? No. Does your boyfriend use heroin? No. Other than smoking weed, do you do any other drugs? No. All right. Well, it's my job to find out how this got in there. Okay, at this point, and then, like right, this isn't going to go away. This investigation is not going away until I find out. Okay. When you find out, you let me know. I definitely will. I Any definitely will. Any further questions? Um, I mean, you already told me she was acting fine. She was, she wasn't sick. You guys got home. You took a nap. You fall asleep together on the couch. Social where the Urban League lady comes, you take her into her bedroom. She falls asleep in there, Urban Lady leaves. She was asleep before I put oh, her Oh, she was still bed. asleep. Mm -hmm. She stayed asleep, Urban Lady left. And you went to check on her and that's when you found she was unresponsive. And there was that pink sippy cup on her bed. And you called 911. Police showed up first and then the medics. Correct. I don't know who showed up first, honestly. Okay. I just, I really want to know why your baby had that large amount of fentanyl in her. I would too. I mean, she was enough to kill a very large animal. There's no way my daughter could have got into any type of fentanyl. I agree with you. I agree. I think someone, just like a bartender, mixes up a drink, put it in that sippy cup. That's the only possible way it could have got in there. Is there any more questions, officer, detective? Do you agree with me? I'm not agreeing because I, um, who would do that to a child? That's I. I there's a, re no a really, really, really messed up person. Been. Really messed up person would do that. There's no possible way. Well, got in there somehow. With a dose this high, survival was a cruel impossibility. The toddler never had a chance. The poison sinking in too deep, too fast. But Pratt, cold and calculating, dances around the truth. She refuses to say it was deliberate, knowing that one slip, one hint of acknowledgement, could bury her. Her silence is deafening, as if she's testing the waters, gauging just how much she can get away with. It's not just fear that holds her back, it's the chilling knowledge that admitting the truth could brand her as a murderer. The room feels heavier with each passing second, the walls closing in as she carefully plays her hand knowing it might be her last. That was in her system. Okay. Any more questions? No. Am I under arrest? No. Can I go? Sure. Pratt's voice slices through the air, her demand for an arrest dripping with impatience, as though she's entitled to an answer. When the detective finally tells her she's free to leave, she doesn't even blink. Without a second of hesitation, 
She turns and heads straight for the door, her steps unnervingly calm, as if nothing had happened. Not a flicker of grief, no sign of remorse, just an empty, chilling detachment. Her daughter's death doesn't seem to even register, leaving the detective frozen, his mind reeling with more terrifying questions than answers. Then, on June 4, 2019, the courtroom becomes a suffocating silence as the jury prepares to deliver its verdict. The tension is unbearable. When the decision is read aloud, it lands like a slap in the face. Instead of first-degree murder, Pratt is found guilty only of involuntary manslaughter. The room fills with shocked murmurs. Only ten years at most for ending her child's life. It's nearly impossible to comprehend, given the mountain of damning evidence against her. What's even harder to stomach is the terrifying thought that this slap on the wrist might not just go unpunished, but might embolden her to commit something even worse once she's back on the streets.